Although you may see poles everywhere, um, there are parts of the power distribution system that don't use poles, and that is the underground distribution system. So in this section, let us look at the health index for the underground cable system. Let us start with degradation. Underground cables are one of the more difficult assets uh, to examine for condition because these assets are put either directly buried or within a conduit, obtaining relevant condition information becomes very difficult and expensive for utility companies. High pot testing can uncover insulation flaws, but overstretching and uh, the insulation during this process can result in premature cable failure. Because of these factors, the traditional method of measuring cable condition has been to track just in-service failure rates. Many utilities have been implementing and refining test methodologies to check the condition of cables in recent years, including um, partial discharge measurements and insulation 10 delta testing. Still, replacement decisions are nearly always based on the frequency of cable failures in conjunction with an assessment of the circuit's uh, criticality. Now, there are three categories of cable that I want to focus on, and they are, first of all, the paper insulated lead covered cables, or also known as the PILC, the extruded cross-linked uh, polyethylene cables, which is uh, also known as the XLPEs, and lastly, the submarine cables. Let us talk about PILC cables first, which uses oil-impregnated paper insulation that is enclosed inside a lead sheath. Now, because lead is resistant to corrosion, PILC cables typically have a service life of 50 to 70 years. If the lead jacket is destroyed and the insulation integrity is compromised, failures might occur. Now, oil can migrate from the higher elevation ends of PILC cables to the lower elevation end of cable due to gravity when they're put in ducts with a high slope. And this can cause the insulating paper at the higher elevation end to dry out and fail especially during a voltage surge. Moisture penetration into the insulation system can also be caused by leaking splices or terminations. Cable insulation inspection in failed samples can provide a precise and significant integration of cable health on circuits of the same vintage and design. Localized discharge activity occurs in locations where the impregnation is inadequate or has deteriorated, or where voids or discontinuities in the cable construction arise as a result of internal processes in the paper insulation that contributes to dielectric degradation. Now, another method of determining condition is to detect, measure, and locate partial discharges in these cables. Partial discharge mapping with very low frequency or what they call VLF power supplies has been created and used to assess cable condition for the past 10 to 15 years. For short lengths of cable or anything that is up to three kilometers, the approach can not only detect partial discharge, but also can locate them using the time of flight of the signal created by the partial discharge. In such uh, instances, it is sometimes possible to pinpoint individual cables that are particularly vulnerable and replace them at a low cost. As previously explained, conventional cable partial discharge mapping is performed with the cable isolated and an external power supply. The goal is to develop systems that can continuously monitor partial discharge activity on circuits during normal operation in order to predict failures. Currently, such systems are prototypes and are not extensively deployed. While early XLPE cable designs failed prematurely after, uh, after fewer than 30 years in many cases, um, current TRXLPE cables are predicted to last over 40 years. 
Now, under partial discharge activity, the principal degradation mode for these XLPE cables is the creation of water trees and deterioration of its insulation. Moisture and contaminants in the insulation system hasten the deterioration of the insulation owing to these kind of water treeing. Now, another mode of degradation um, is the corrosion of concentric neutrals. If the cable jacket is compromised, moisture can enter the insulation system, speeding up insulation degradation and cable failure. Overheating caused by overloading or short circuiting can also cause cable degradation. Cable failures can also be caused by overstressing of insulation during power surges. Partial discharge activity is extremely sensitive to polymeric insulation. As a result, it is critical that the cables, joints, and accessories are discharge free when they are being connected. As a result, partial discharge testing is a crucial and practical test for these cables. The most significant deterioration me mechanism for polymeric cables is water treat. Microscopic inspection of failed cable samples to count water trees is a good approach to analyze cable insulation status and determine how much further the cable may be used. Accelerated electrical testing of recovered cables, on the other hand, can be used to identify the condition of cables of comparable design and vintage. To analyze insulated cables, a variety of organizations offer partial discharge testing and insulation power factor measuring services, or what they call the TAN Delta measuring services. The mechanical damage to the insulation during installation, allowing water to enter the insulation or thermal overloading of the cable are the main deterioration modes for low voltage cables. Distribution submarine cables are a component of the distribution underground cable asset type also, and uh, routine cable checks are of low usefulness. Inspections can give you an idea of how well terminations and accessories are doing, but they don't actually address the main issues like insulation deterioration or sheath and external covering degradation. The condition of cable insulation can be determined using partial discharge testing methods. Insulation state can also be determined by examining and evaluating samples collected from cable failures. However, delivering important and meaningful information takes a long time using this method. And as a result, cable end of life is typically determined by operating performance. So for example, the number of failures. The corrosion of the neutral at or near the point of entrance into the water for underwater cables has been identified as a key concern that can lead to a potentially dangerous state. If this is discovered, the cable will need to be repaired or replaced. Now before we move on further into our course, let us take a brief look at our sponsor for this course. Now, as an engineer, especially when I first started in my career, I really felt overwhelmed the list of documents that we need to do on top of our technical work. Yet, these documents are very important in our career as it is the more prominent thing that displays our credibility to management and to our clients if we so decide to become an engineer consultant, which is where the real actual money is. Now, I don't have these tools available to me when I first started my career, but now PM Milestone has created this package of all the professional templates that you need so that you can focus more on the technical aspect of your career. These templates are tried and tested by real professionals, so you should feel confident in using them in your career to present your best foot forward in front of your manager or clients. These templates are also updated periodically, and I think their last update is just 2021, so they are not going to be out of date or context to the present times, as these people are serious in getting the most professional product to meet your needs. They are also very confident of the quality of these templates too, as they offer you their product completely risk-free with 60-day money-back guarantee if you are not satisfied with it. So. If you are interested in this product and would also like to support me in creating these courses on YouTube in the future, please check out their product using the link in my video description titled Course Sponsor PM Milestone 2.0. 
Urban utilities that rely heavily on underground distribution circuits and have a significant number of underground cables have begun to create a more systematic method to assessing the overall state of underground circuits and managing and prioritizing their cable replacement programs. Now, this strategy is in line with uh, the best in class asset management techniques for making investment decisions based on all available relevant data, and it complies with regulatory obligations. The systematic study and analysis of data indicating cable condition, together with data on failure rates, provides a low cost method of gathering information to support investment decisions. Failure analysis of failed cable samples and accessories can help determine the health of cables of the same era and type. The existence of water trees within the insulation of XLPE cables can be shown by microscopic inspection of small insulation recovered from a short segment of broken cable. In the case of PILC cables, the degree of dryness of the insulating paper indicates insulating oil migration from the failed sample, and the findings of such testing can be used to predict cable insulation quality for similar installations. Electric tests such as um, AC breakdown or partial discharge test can be performed in a lab to determine the integrity of the insulation if larger lengths of the failed cable are available. These findings might be applied to all cables in service that are of the same design and vintage and that operate in similar conditions. In the past, utilities um, conducted high pot testing of cables in the field on a regular basis after removing them from service. However, such testing has been discontinued because it is thought to induce premature cable failure, especially in the case of XLPE cables. Large-scale in-service cable testing is ultimately a costly and impractical alternative. However, a variety of tests are available and are occasionally used to determine the remaining useful knife of cable, uh, key cable circuits. Insulating power factor or TAN delta measurements and very low frequency or VLF high pot tests are examples of such tests used to determine the state of insulation. The degree of corrosion on concentric neutral wires is determined using time domain reflectrometry or TDR test. Partial discharge readings are available for many test labs to assess the condition of cables in service. Cable partial discharge testing can be done energized without causing any disruption to the plant or facilities or de-energized if necessary. The cable obtained from partial discharge testing can provide critical information about the quality of cable insulation and its impact on cable system health. However, the result of such tests cannot always be correctly interpreted due to high levels of ambient electromagnetic noise present in utility right of ways. Now, TAN delta, commonly known as the um, dissipation factor test, is a valuable diagnostic procedure for determining cable insulation integrity. The tangent of the pole it, uh, is measured in this test, which reflects the level of resistance in the insulation. This angle will be almost zero in a flawless cable. A, a rise in the resistive current through the insulation and as a result, contamination is indicated by a rising angle. Now, because they create pulses and then monitor the reflections that may occur, a time domain reflectometers are often compared to radar devices for cables. These reflections occur in cables due to impedance changes along the length of the cable. The regular portions of a cable, such as open ends, taps, joint splices, and so on, can induce impedance changes. TDRs may also identify cable problems like open or short circuits, as well as crucial irregularities, such concentric neutral uh, corrosion, moisture intrusion, etc., etc. Now, concentric neutral corrosion is a significant issue, especially on unjacketed cables or when the cable's neutrals are exposed to excessive moisture over time. Corrosion can induce premature cable failures and to provide a rise of a contact. Lastly, a high potential test, also known as high pot test or a dielectric withstand test, is used to assess the electrical insulation's ability to withstand an over voltage transient. 
crushed insulation, stray wire strands or braided shielding, conductive or corrosive impurities around the conductors, and inadequate creepage and clearance distances introduced during the manufacturing process can all be detected using this type of test. The VLF test is used as a pass, fail, or yes, no test, and the cable of being tested either passes or fails these type of test voltages. So now let us uh, just briefly touch based on the uh, submarine cables. The majority of utilities actually lack a policy for evaluating the condition of distribution underwater cables. Uh, routine examinations of submarine cables are of uh, limited usefulness as it only provides some indication of the status of terminations and accessories but failing to address the fundamental condition issues of internal degradation, sheath degradation, and external covering degradation. Discharge testing procedures are available, however, they are costly and unreliable. Excavation of opportunistically obtained samples taken at the time of failure gives a technique of determining the overall state of the circuit in service. However, delivering a useful amount of data takes a long time with this method. As a result, performance, for example, the number of failures, is frequently used to determine cable end of life. The condition of the visual examination and the cable's performance are used to determine whether to repair or replace it. Inspection data relating to corrosion of the neutral at the point of entry into the water has been supplementing choices on submarine cable replacement in recent years because neutral corrosion has been identified as a potentially major degradation concern, the degree of corrosion of the neutral at the waterline is used to determine whether the cable should be repaired or replaced. Submarine cables, like other subsurface distribution cables, are subjected to partial discharge and TDR tests to determine the quality of cable insulation and the condition of the concentric neutral. Also, because submarine cables are submerged in water, greater focus is placed on the integrity of the armor, sheath, or jacket. Any failure of the sheath due to corrosion enabling water intrusion into insulation will result in end of life. As with the poles, uh, before calculating the health indices, uh, let us look at each of the categories that we are going to assess. So let us start with service age. Note that the range in the table are for XLPE cables and for the PILC, you just need to add five to the ranges in the tables in front of you. So for the XLPE cables, uh, for the rating of four, it is anything that is below 15 years. Uh, for rating of three, it is between 16 to 25. For rating of two, it is between 26 to 35. For rating of one, it is uh, anything between 36 to 45 years and for a rating of zero um, the cable is uh, of greater than 45 years of age next up it is cable failure analysis we where we are basing it all on water trees a rating of four means that no water trees are found um, there is no rating of three in this category for a rating of two, it means that there are a few long water trees and bow tie trees found. Uh, for a rating of one, it means that there are numerous long water trees found, uh, contaminants found in insulation, and uh, defects on the conductor shield. And finally, with a rating of zero, water trees are found extending thickness of insulation. The cable failed um, the ABCD tests and contaminants found in insulation as well as defects on conductor shield. Now the third one is field testing. Um, so with rating of four, it means that there are no abnormalities detected during the testing. Um, again, we don't have a rating of three. Uh, for rating of two, there are excessive neutral corrosion detected by the, by the test. For rating of one, excessive partial discharge detected in the field testing. And for rating of zero, there's a failure of high pot test as well as a failure of very low frequency tests. Now, you may ask by now why some of these numbers are, are uh, erased. Well, it means that we don't really have that many condition ratings that we need to, um, that we need to uh, uh, slot into. 
However, though, you still want to start with a condition rating of four just because of the math that we need um, to calculate the overall health index. So then after the test, we look at the condition of concentric neutral. Um, so for rating of four, there are no abnormalities detected. And uh, we skip rating three again. Uh, for a rating of two, it means uh, any cable that is unjacketed um, and has the bare concentric neutral submerged in clay soil or that the feeder cable has no neutral corrosion. Uh, for rating of one, it means that the cable has unjacketed bare concentric neutral that is submerged in sandy soil. And with a rating of zero, it means that more than one half of the neutral of the uh, cable has known corrosion. Next is the outage records in the last five years. And with this category is based on the number of failures per 10 kilometers of cable per year. So for a rating of four, it is less than 0.5 failures per 10 kilometer cable per year. For a rating of three, the number of failures is between 0.5 and one. Uh, for a rating of two, the number of failures is between one to two. And in this case, the cable is uh, what we refer to as deteriorating for a cable of uh, for a rating of one the number of failures is actually between two to four and in this case the cable is close to its end of life um, and lastly for a rating of zero the number of failures is anything that's calculated greater than four and in this case the cable is going to be at end of life So next is the loading history as how much the cable is loaded also, um, because it would actually affect its health. Uh, for a rating of four, the cable has been consistently loaded below 50% of its continuous design rating and that the cable has not been subjected to any emergency loading. Um, for a rating of three, the cable has been consistently loaded to more than 50% and up to 70% of its continuous design rating, and that the cable has been subjected to emergency loading within recommended time temperature limits. For the rating of two, the cable has been consistently loaded to more than 70% and up to 90% of its continuous design rating, and the cable has been subjected to emergency loading within recommended time temperature limits. For the rating of one, the cable has been consistently loaded to more than 90% and up to 100% of its continuous design rating, or the cable has been subjected to emergency load existing recommended time temperature limits. And lastly, for the rating of zero, the cable has been so consistently loaded above 100% of its continuous design rating or above recommended time temperature limit that it has become damaged and or degraded beyond repair. For the category uh, of visual inspection of splices or terminations, um, in this one we only have three ratings, which is uh, four, two, and zero. So for the rating of four, the splice or stress cone appears in good condition and no indication of moisture ingress. Uh, for the rating of two, there is normal wear on the splice or stress cone, but no apparent damage and no evidence of moisture ingress. And lastly, for rating of zero, the splice or stress cone is of poor condition and has potential moisture ingress or that the IR test indicates hot spots. And the lastly, we got a category of um, the condition of the armor sheath uh, or jacket. Um, so with a rating of four, it means that there are no abnormalities or signs of water ingress into insulation and or, uh, that there are no rusting or corrosion being detected. Um, for a rating of three, uh, it means that the armor or sheath or jacket has minor signs of uh, abnormalities or minor signs of water ingress into insulation or minor signs of rusting or corrosion being detected. Uh, for rating of two, it means that uh, the sheath has significant signs of those what I've mentioned. Uh, for rating of one, it means that the sheath has um, serious signs of the abnormalities, water ingress or rusting corrosion. And lastly, for the rating of zero, it means that um, the sheath, uh, armor, or jacket has very serious signs uh, of such conditions and you may want to actually consider uh, replacing these cables in that case. 
So after looking at all of these categories, let's look at the um, health index weights. So how are these, each of these categories are weighted um, across the entire health index? So for the service age, we assign the, the weight of five, um, the cable failure analysis, five, field testing, we assign it to five again, uh, condition of concentric neutral and the outage records in the last five years, not as important as the first three, so we rated those as four. Uh, we also rate the condition of the armor sheaf jacket and submarine cables only as four as well. Um, the loading history, not as important as the other three that I mentioned, so we gave it as um, the rating of uh, two. And lastly, visual inspections of splices or terminations, we put the weight as the lowest, which is a weight of one. So now let us go over an example. Um, consider an XLPE cable in the system for uh, of 18 years, uh, which uh, the rating would be three in that category, with no water trees found, which is uh, a rating of four, and a lot of partial discharge detected, which means we gave it a rating of one in that category. The concentric neutral looks good with nothing out of the ordinary in which the rating is four, and it has a failure rate of 0.6 per 10 kilometers in the last five years, which is a rating of three. And the continuous loading for this line is around 60%, which is a rating of three, and the terminations and splices upon inspection is considered good without moisture ingress. So it's a good sign, so it's a rating of four. So now, based on this information, calculate the health index for this cable system. So, of course, uh, we first would look at um, the calculated score. So it's based. Uh, so it's basically the summation of um, the ratings that I mentioned in the problem, uh, multiplied by the weights of those categories, which is equal to seventy-eight. Now, you may, you may found that um, we don't have the armor and sheath as a, the category because um, the, the problem that I mentioned is not a submarine cable. So that's why we ignore that particular category. And I mean, even if you're working in a utility company, um, if the business decided to you know, uh, uh, get rid of a particular category, this is really um, up to the business itself. So, so every single business will have different types of ways on how to calculate these health indices. So after you get the calculated score, then you, of course, you get the maximum achievable score. So again, it will be like four multiplied by the summation of all the weights together. So in this case, it will be 104. Um, of course, the formula is score calculated divided by score max times 100. So it's 78 divided by 104 times 100 equals to 75. So now, as mentioned in the fundamental section, a value between 70 to 85 is considered good. And as such, there might be deterioration of some components of the cable, uh, but only normal maintenance is needed at this time. Now, if you like this video, please don't forget to click like and subscribe to our channel. Our channel, the Double E Bootcamp, has a wealth of knowledge regarding to the energy industry. So be sure to check it out. Also, this video is part of a playlist of the whole course, and so I've put the link to the playlist for this free course in the video description. As you may be aware, I'm a professional online instructor that teaches various topics regarding to the energy industry and offers certificate of completion at the end of each course. As you probably have noticed, this course needs fundamental knowledge in basic asset management. Physical asset management is important and the skills are highly sought after in many large companies within the energy industry or any industry that manages large asset in infrastructures for that matter. If you lack knowledge in physical asset management, look no further than my physical asset management management fundamentals course offered at electrical engineering portal. As in that course, I will provide you with the fundamentals that you need to kickstart your career in the physical asset management world. Another type of knowledge that you need for this course is fundamental information about the power distribution system. If you don't have enough experience in the industry, I would suggest you to enroll in my distribution power engineering fundamentals course hosted on Udemy as in that course, I will walk you through the different parts of the power distribution system as well as 
basic design concepts that you will need to kickstart your career in the industry. Now, I have put the links to both of these courses in the video description also. Lastly, I have also included the link to my website in the video description that contains the information to all the courses that I offer as well as other helpful resources um, that you may find useful in your career or in your learning path. Thank you and I wish you good luck in your career. Remember, knowledge is power.